This week on Gadget, make lockouts a thing of the past with an RFID lock from MyKey2300. Aloha, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Ballester of the Society of Jesus, that's the California province of the Jesuits, a religious order of the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology in Honolulu, Hawaii, at the Newman Center in Paradise on the campus of the University of Hawaii. It's a bright sunny day, and uh, we're going to get you onto the tech. Now, we've got a new geek wear this week, again from our friends at Think Geek who have sent us this nice little uh, reminder of what geeks normally do. And quite simply, we void your warranties. That's right. If you've ever taken something apart and found extra pieces, or if you love putting things back together in a different configuration, then you are a geek, and this applies to you. And you need to go to www.thinkgeek.com and check out this shirt, as well as all the other geek wear that Think Geek can offer you. The gadget bite of the week is this. The Hyundai 250U Biometric Hard Drive Enclosure from Brando Workshop. It's incredibly easy to install. You simply remove the end, install the hard drive, it takes 2.5 inch laptop hard drives, and uh, you close it back up. All the drivers are contained within the installation CD, and it has the standard complement of USB and power connectors. This uh, little device is uh, NIST certified for encryption and decryption in real time. It has a chip inside that actually handles all of the read-write encryption so that it can offload that from the CPU. It also can store up to 10 fingerprints within its memory. So it's got a little flash chip in here that can store the uh, authorized fingerprints so that it will open or lock the encryption. It uh, has a solid aluminum body and can transfer data at 1.6 gigabits per second which is more than enough for most applications when you're dealing with encrypted uh, data. It's powered entirely by the USB port. It actually includes one of those cables that has a, a dual USB plug so that you can supply additional power if necessary. And it uh, weighs uh, just under half a pound. This is actually quite a nice little unit. And when we used it, we were actually able to get it up and running and encrypting data within about a minute or so. If you're looking for a nice way to have a secure hard drive, a hard drive that even if it's taken out of the enclosure cannot be read without the proper fingerprint or a supercomputer to break the uh, encryption, you might want to take a look at this. You can find it at the Brando Workshop and uh, tell them that Gadget sent you from the Bite of the Week. The main event in this week's episode is the RFID lock from MyKey2300. Now, just like it sounds, this is a door lock that can be installed on any door, and it, it doesn't have a keyhole. It doesn't have any tumblers. It doesn't have any pins. It can't be picked. It can't be forced open because it's entirely electronic. Now, there are two ways to open this lock. The first way is to use a key fob. What you would do is you would push the little entry button, and once it lights up, you know that it's ready to accept the command, like so. Now. MyKey2300 has included two key fobs along with five RFID cards. So that's not a lot, but it's enough to give to a friend or a coworker and some family members and to have one or two spares just in case you get locked out. Now, if you should happen to forget all of your key cards or your fobs, you actually still can get in by using the keypad. You would simply open up this little part here because this would go on the outside of the door and you would type in your code. Once you've typed in the code, the deadbolt would open and you'd be able to get in just fine. Now there are two components to this. There is the internal and the external, and they're joined by these cables. This goes on the outside of the door and is what would give you access and uh, the ability to use your key cards. And this goes on the inside of the door, and this is where the batteries are contained, where the deadbolt actually is, and all the mechanisms to throw that bolt. Now one of the interesting things about this lock is People always wonder what happens when the power dies. Either if it's tied into the building power, what happens if uh, there's a power outage, or if it's using batteries, what happens when the batteries die? It's very inconvenient for you to not have a, a, an optional way to sort of get into the office. Well, MyKey has 
thought about that in, in two separate ways. First, they include a power plug on the back internal side of the deadbolt module, which will allow you to hook up an external power supply. You could run it directly off of the building power, and what that would do is it would make the batteries a secondary source. Now, should you not do that, or should the batteries die even as a secondary source, you can actually use a little port here on the, uh, the keypad, which has two contacts that you can connect a 9-volt battery to. This will supply enough power for you to either type in your code or to run the fob past the sensor and open the bolt. Now, as far as the construction is concerned, this is not a toy. It's not a plastic unit. This is not one of those things that someone's going to be able to kick open really easily. If anything, the parts around the door, the door jam, are going to snap before these steel components do. It's a very hefty deadbolt, and it comes with this, which is a deadbolt receptacle that you can mount on the door jam itself. Now, one of the things to note about this is it is a deadbolt, but it's not one of those deadbolts that goes to the internal core of the door. It's actually a lot easier to install than that. Installing the Mikey 2300 is straightforward. The mounting hardware is integrated into the unit, and the only tools you need are a Phillips and flat screwdriver, a drill, and a 1-inch boring bit. We're going to use these strips of wood to simulate a door. If there's an existing secondary keyhole, you can use it, as the RFID lock uses a standard configuration for deadbolts. If not, the package includes a template that can be placed against the door in order to properly drill the hole through which the two halves of the unit will connect. Once you have a hole that is at least one inch in diameter, you simply pass the cables through it, thread them through the inner steel mounting plate, and fasten the outer body to the plate. The mounting plate can then be fastened to the door with four mounting screws. After connecting the cables to the inner body, you fasten the entire unit to the steel plate using four tapered bolts. Add four AA batteries and the unit is ready to work. To complete the installation, you install the latch housing on the inner door frame. Mikey has included a plastic pad to adjust the height of the housing, just in case your door frame is offset from the deadbolt. Programming the device is simple. In the battery compartment, there are two buttons, the card button and the keypad button. To enroll a set of RFID tags, you press the card button, then pass each RFID tag past the sensor. You will hear a beep each time a device is successfully registered, and you can enroll up to 50 devices. Once you have enrolled all the desired tags, you press the card button again, and you will hear a three-beep tone. Those RFID tags are now authorized to open the deadbolt. To set up the keypad pin, you press the keypad button, type in a 3 to 20 number pin, then press the keypad button again. That pin can now open the deadbolt. There are three ways to throw the deadbolt. The first is to press the button on the exterior unit for three seconds. The second is to press the open-close button on the interior housing. The third is to manually throw the bolt using the deadbolt handle. You can open the deadbolt using the RFID tag, the keypad, the open-close button, or the handle. If you desire privacy, there is a manual lock on the interior housing that will physically disable movement of the deadbolt. The RFID lock includes several options including an auto lock system, a burglar alarm that will sound in case of forced entry, and a positive feedback system that will alert you in case the deadbolt has not properly engaged. We installed the MyKey 2300 for four weeks and we have never had a problem with the lock. It opened every time, locked solidly, and the batteries didn't die. We were able to install and program the lock in under 30 minutes and it has given us trouble-free operation ever since. So a few final thoughts about the Mikey 2300 RFID door lock. This is a very simple device to set up. It only costs about $200, which is well within the range of most people who are looking for some serious security. And it gives you some pretty high performance locking without that high performance price. If you were to go with another RFID solution, one of the more centralized ones, you'd be looking at something in the range of $1,000 to $2,000 a lock. This does it for 200 gives you a decent amount of security, and it, uh, it has a very easy installation. Now, if there were any drawbacks to this, I would have to say that it's the RFID cards themselves. 40-bit encryption works, but it would be nicer if uh, we could use one of the higher encryption RFID standards. Now, the contacts over at Mikey have said that they're coming out with some more advanced models of this, but this will still sort of be the entry level for the person who just wants to have something very secure, very easy to use, and very easy to install. This is a very good deal. Now, 
That's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to learn more about anything that you've seen on today's show, including the Geekware or the Gadget Bite of the Week or the MyKey2300, you can go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. If you want to write us an email, and again, thank you for the emails that are coming in. We read each and every single one of them. Even if we can't respond to all of them, we try our hardest. You can write us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology. And I believe that there's no Uber geek without you. <laughs>